Live from the Rock Ridge Broadcasting Room at Rock Ridge High School, this is Rock Ridge Rundown. Good morning, I'm Melina and this is your last Rock Ridge Rundown of the 2023-2024 school year. As always, Rock Ridge Rundown is a weekly news broadcast put together by the Journalism 1 and 2 classes. Today is Thursday, May 30th, and I hope your morning is going well. I have several cool stories to get to this morning for you, so let's get into it. Over the past couple of weeks, 6th grade students from Rock Ridge Elementary School have been visiting our high school for tours. These tours are a chance for them to get a first-hand look at what the high school life is like. During these tours, students are taken around the entire campus, exploring everything from regular classrooms to specialized areas, like automotive and shop classes. They get to see where different subjects are taught, from math to English, and even get a peek into advancing classes like those focusing on cars and other hands-on skills. These visits are important because they help students start to think about their future education and career paths by seeing all opportunities available at the, high, at the high school level. Students can start to envision where they might fit and in what interests they might be able to pursue in the, in the future. Plus, it's a chance for them to get comfortable with the idea of transitioning to a new school and environment before they reach high school. Overall, these tours are an exciting, exciting and informative experience for our young visitors from Rock Ridge Elementary School. We have some very artistic and creative students here at Rockridge, and this really shows in our art classes, such as Ms. Custer's painting class. Ms. Custer is a very skilled and knowledgeable teacher who is always happy to help. In painting class, students don't just learn how to paint, they also learn a lot of history about it and how certain things about your painting can create and affect emotions. As Ms. Custer likes to say, students create a feast for the eyes using different colors and focus points. Some of the paintings the students have done this semester are landscapes, visionary art, impressionism, animalistic paintings, and abstract. If you get the opportunity in the future, consider taking a painting class. Even if you aren't the most artistic person, there's a spot for everyone. Thursday, May 9th, 10 of the Culinary 2 students went to the Library Pizza in Duluth for a burger competition with two teams, Rockridge Green and Rockridge Black, competing against Duluth East, Duluth Denfeld, and Cook County. Rockridge Green team had a burger called the Big Kahuna, a, a Hawaiian-themed burger. Rockridge Black team's burger was called the Curd Burger. The Rockridge teams went into the competition to have fun and for the experience. The Rockridge Green team ended up winning the competition, with Rockridge Black also placing third, just behind Duluth Denfeld. After the short break, we'll be back with Sports with Stingleby! When no bit 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 Final episode! Yeah! This is Thomas J. Stingleby here with the final Sports with Stingleby segment ever. Today we have something a little different planned for sports. We have decided to put together a Best of Stingleby highlight reel. Included will be my best moments in the rundown, announcing at sports games and anything else exciting I might have done. You know your boy Tom is always up to something silly. Let's hope the cameras didn't catch me lacking anywhere in this. <laughs> Anywho, let's get into it. So their solution was taxing American colonists. Thanks, Sherry. Now let's take it over to our chief meteorologist, Alan butt for the weather. What's it like out there, Alan? Cold! Anything else? Teabag! All right. Let's hear from our news analyst, Ely Von Huhudili. Ahoy, ahoy! That's not going to be called for icing. But the Spartans will come right back from that. Pops oh. are goodness gracious! Rory Scuffy gets checked like a dog, and he gets up like even more of a dog. That's what the Wolverine spirit's about. Stay fierce, folks! Everyone played their part to do amazing as a team. Tickly. Wow. Jeez, criminy. All right. Don't get old, folks. Basket. Um, and as we say that, Tom, a whole bunch of... I'm, uh, I'm Tom. You're dear Travis. Good Lord. What are those things that walls are made out of? <laughs> behind their own net. Oh, my Trent young goes down. My goodness. Somebody check the calendar because I think it's yam time. Hockey team Saturday for section double A tournament to tournament play. I don't know why it says that, folks. LOL. We'll be back in a little bit with the second period. I'm going to go devour this shaboing boing. We'll see ya. 
And folks, that hot dog was excellent. We are back here with some more Wolverine Boys Hockey. What is up, everybody? Uh, it's Tom Stigleby here back with big old Sporty McSport time. Uh, buckle those seatbelts and roll them up, kids, because this could be a bumpy ride. Ha! Cole Brown's and down the flatly, flatly. Oh, up, goodness. Ding off the post. Pivoty pop topping off the pickle jar there. We hope everybody here has a great Christmas break. Stay safe, eat some hot chocolate, or drink it, whichever you prefer. We will see you later. <laughs> Boy, was I just being a silly goose. I think Rockridge puts something in the water because there's no way a normal human does those kinds of things. Either way, it's pretty crazy to think that it's all over now. You know, that really is enough to make a boy cry. Good thing I'm a grown man. Jokes aside, it's been a great run, and I'm absolutely honored to be the man behind the sports here at Rock Ridge. We hope all you goofy fans have enjoyed the rundowns as, and, and sports broadcasts as much as we have. I sincerely appreciate all the supports from fans and teachers in the hallways. It sure does make my little mustache curl. <laughs> wow, that sure was a weird way to say it. Maybe it's for the best that I won't be doing this job anymore. I think old Tom is going senile. Anywho, I think our time here is up. One last time, to all the sports fans, this is Tom Steelby, signing off. And now you're watching... Worldwide Wolverines with... Luska! And also her class. Have you ever thought about the history of fountains? No, why? Well, fountains are much more than just looks. Most have a rich history behind them. What about the fountain in Alcott Park? What does that one have? The fountain was built in 1937 during the Great Depression. Over 100 Virginians took part in the making of this fountain. Do people still come to this fountain? Normally the fountain isn't the primary reason people visit Alcott Park anymore, but when it was first built, it was very popular and police had to manage the flow of traffic coming into and out of the site. Do you know of any other fountains? Now that you mention it, I do remember this one fountain called the Arethusa Fountain. I've never heard of that one. Tell me more. Well, the Arethusa Fountain was built on an island in Italy named Ortigia. The fountain was built in 1699. Wow, that's a really old fountain. Yeah, there's also a Greek legend behind it. Arethusa, a Greek nymph, had fled from Alphaeus because he had loved her too much. She asked Artemis to hide her, and he turned her into a spring. Alphaeus turned her into a river that flows into the harbor of Syracuse so he could be closer to her. That's so interesting. What is the fountain like today? The fountain is still in use and has been restored many times since it was built. The fountain has become a popular tourist spot and has a variety of animals like ducks and fish and many freshwater plants. It's really cool how something as simple as a fountain has so much history behind it. I agree. I wonder what history other fountains have. This year, the building and construction crew has made leaps and bounds in their projects. This semester, the group has worked on the sheds up at the football fields. These sheds are used for the players during the season for storage and at halftime. They have gotten the siding on and are finishing up the inside of the shed with putting on shelves and storage areas. Mr. Foster says, we have gotten a lot done and keep pushing forward and hopefully it will be done before the end of the year. Foster has a few things to finish like putting in heaters for the colder months. With Foster's record of getting things done on time, he should have the shed done well, by the, well before the end of the year. Also, Foster demands perfection so players know the shed will be built and built well. This year, the class has also worked on the baseball sheds and dugouts, as well as several other projects inside the shop area as well. Great work to all the students in the building and construction classes. This past semester for students in the outdoor recreation has been a great hands-on experience class to enjoy the outdoors and learn some skills and games. Top and Miss Greener, her main focus for this semester was to give experiences. Outdoor Rec has done many activities this semester to live up to that goal. Starting way back in February, the students headed down to the little drainage ditch in the north side of the parking lot and shoveled off a little ice rink to play boom brawl. A few days after the outdoor red headed back outside and learned how to start and maintain fires and keep it interesting, they roasted hot dogs and marshmallows over the fires they created. Next, they walked down to Mud Lake, which was pe just past the drainage ditch, and went ice fishing on the lake. Only one fish was caught that day, but it was a fantastic experience and morning for everyone. Outdoor Rec was then going to make maple syrup, so they started by tapping some trees and collecting sap, but they never got to finish because they don't have a boiler. 
And most recently, they went out in the woods and around the school and created some survival debris shelters and got creative making them. To finish off this school year, this week and next week, they will be taking the school bike fleet and going mountain biking on back trails and then to Masabi Trail. This has been an amazing class and fantastic way for students to learn and get outdoors with hands-on experience. As our school year comes to a close, we like to look back on the big events that happen, such as homecoming and snow week. Student Council does a great job every year putting on a very fun week of events for both homecoming and snow week. Homecoming and snow week is always a blast. We always have a good time setting up for the weeks, even though it can be stressful and take a few weeks, said Cora, who is a member of the Student Council. We would also like to thank the teachers and staff members who helped to make these events a success. And thank you to all members of the Student Council for an awesome homecoming and snow week. School year is quickly coming to an end. Teachers and students are all excited for summer break and have a lot of ideas on what they will be spending their summer doing. Most kids hang out with friends and spend time outside. Teachers do the same and some might even get another job. All right, I'm with Mr. Golobich. So, um, what was your favorite part of this school year, Mr. G? Uh, being in a brand new school, um, enjoying all the new things with it, the new spaces, and it's been a fun year. All right, so what was your favorite class to teach this year? Um, I would have to say AP government. It's always my favorite because I enjoy teaching government. All right, I see. So what are you most excited about when the school year ends? Not having to deal with kids the last couple weeks of school is when they're all rowdy. All right, I see. You got any summer plans? Just hang out with my kids and be outside as much as I can. All right, thank you, G. Thank you, Mr. G. That's a wrap today with Mr. Golovich. We hope you have a great summer. That's All right, who am I here with? Joshua Son Sonino. All right, and we never really see you on camera, so what do you do behind the scenes as broadcast manager? So as the broadcast manager, it's mainly my job to edit the script and decide what stories make it and what don't. When a story is good to go, when our writers have done a great job and I can put it in the script to go live, I just put it in. I'll maybe edit it with some to fix up some grammar, some spelling, but ultimately it's their story, goes in as they had it. If a story is close, but not it, I might change a few things, make sure it's presentable for the camera, it's school appropriate, and it's just a good story all around. And if a story's just not there because someone was having an off day, it just wasn't it for that week, or we didn't have enough room for it, I hold it, save it, and we either reuse it later, or we just never, never sees the light of day. That's uh, broadcasting for you. All right, thank you. He's ready. I don't know why I'm asking him if he's ready. Okay, here we go. Remember what we're doing at the Benin game? Yeah, dude, look. <laughs> this is Chad Jason over here. Yep. Yeah. See ya. Alrighty, who am I here with? I'm Quaid. Hi, Quaid. How did you get dragged into this shenanigan mess? You're not even in the class. There's two stories. One, the short one is, um, I get a frantic text from Mason one morning, come help me, things are broken. <laughs> uh, the longer story is he'd been talking about it, and I was like, well, maybe I'll show up. And then the very next morning, I get the frantic text being like, hey, things are broken, come help me fix them. <laughs> All right, so it's Mason's fault. Yes. All right, I can blame Mason for this one. All right, who am I here with? Mason Kroll, technical director of Rockridge Broadcasting. That was so professional. Um, what's the difference between troubleshooting when we're just doing our run-throughs and you're getting ready versus when we're live? So before the broadcast, we're trying to find the most efficient ways to do things, try to mitigate what could go wrong, have redundancy, make sure we have a plan for um, every step of the way. During the broadcast, if and when things have gone wrong a lot this year, um, when that does happen, we try to fix the problem as quickly as possible, figure out what in our process caused us to fail, try to fix that for next time. All right, and then I have one more question for you. What are your thoughts on the fact that you've had issues every single live broadcast we've had this year? I mean, womp womp, but for the boys. Add hitting for the girls. I see light. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Who am I here with? 
Austin Shackman. All right, and you are Tom Stingleby, the yes. man behind the mask. Uh, how did that become a thing? I think it was 10th grade. It was like a Let's Go project, and I think it was the Boston Tea Party project. I remember it's still on my YouTube channel. Mason and I were doing it, and I just needed like a co-host anchor guy kind of thing. So I just, there's like this guy named Bob Menery on, uh, on Instagram and he like commentates all these games and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's really explicit, but if you take the explicit stuff out, you just get an announcer voice. So I did like an impression of his voice. I was like, hey, this is Tom Stigleby here with the Boston Tea Party, blah, blah, blah. And now that's just my voice and now I can do it. And now it's Tom Stigleby. All right, thank you. One student sat on the forum, in class, a friend sits on the next one. You know it's live. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be giggling in the back. Everybody's everybody sitting there. Okay, I'll just stand. I'll just if you guys want to sit right there. We're good. All right, who am I here with? Maria Berlin. All righty, and what made you want to be the weather girl? I'm not going to lie, I was kind of just put into the role in the beginning, but now I really like it because it's. It's actually so easy, I'm not gonna lie. It's like one of the easiest like thing I've ever ever had to do. <laughs> what actually do you do as the weather girl? Um, not gonna lie, I don't do a lot. I literally look on the weather app, write down all the temperatures and weathers mm -hmm. and make the weather slides and come to the broadcast and broadcast it. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> This is the broadcast room. We got our beautiful trash bags. We got Tom Stingleby mustaches. Oh. I thought those were real. Oh. Oh. He just molds. That was unnecessary. <laughs> this is where the teleprompters are when they're turned on. Hi, Quid. Is that a laser pointer? Yeah. Okay. We have an empty box of bubbler. Thank you, Mason. We have a five and go from our first ever live broadcast and another mustache and another mustache and more mustaches. Yeah. You think we have enough mustaches? No, never enough. I don't know. So, put the final mustache up there. I don't think anybody's getting that. I saw my Tom Singh before, so I gotta like get out of it. Melina, what is one part of the broadcast that to this day still concerns you? Um, definitely the amount of times and close calls we've had of Austin or Tom Stingleby almost getting us cancelled by saying something inappropriate while his mic is not muted. Another one would be um, my co-host uh, having a little bit of a swearing problem. That one's, that yeah. one's not the best. Yeah, yeah, understandable. What's one thing uh, that you think people don't know about what goes behind the scenes? Oh, definitely whenever I'm anchoring with Jack, I have to stand on a box because I'm not tall enough, so the cameras and the height difference look really weird. That one's scary. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah. Hey, I'm here with Tristan and Jalen. Jalen's for basketball, Tristan's for cross country. We're doing a senior recap for sports. What's the most fun memory you guys made during your sports seasons? Jalen for basketball. Um, I would have to go with the playoff game at Denfeld. We came in, you know, being the higher seed, the lower seed, and winning. Can't forget Leo eating, like, I think six Uncrustables on the bus ride there. I think that was the most fun I had. All right, now Tristan for cross country. Um, I'd have to say the Roy Griak meet. Griak, yeah. Um, it was just generally a really big cross country meet. Um, a lot of porta potties, like they had an entire wall of porta potties, pretty good. The bus ride there was pretty fun, messing with people, you know, on the road, looking at them. Uh, overall, fun meet. Um, I did terrible though, but really hilly, but it was, it was a lot of fun. All right, thank you guys. All right, I'm here with Ian Lucan. How you doing, Ian? Oh, I'm doing great. All right, this week we're doing Senior recaps for sports. I'm using Ian for football because Ian was in football. Ian, what's your favorite memory, including a football coach? Oh, you know, honestly, the everyday slander on Tonka, the relentless just calling him out on anything and everything, and watching the man fight for his life, chewing a pack of gum in one practice, a whole pack of gum in one practice. And if you know, you know. Good old Grimace. All right, thank you, Ian. 
here. I'm with Travis Bird. How you doing, Travis? Oh, I'm doing all right. All right. We're doing a weekly senior recap of sporting, and Travis is doing skiing because Travis is in skiing. So, Travis, what was your favorite course from your senior year? Uh, my favorite course my senior year would have to be um, the Helsinki run that's run two for the boys at Giants Ridge. It was the MLK invite over that weekend. It's a Monday. Everybody has the day off, and... It was just a really good run, felt solid overall. I ended up with a really good result. It was a really big race, ended up with 11th overall. And it was just fun from the top, top down. Sounds fantabulous. Thank you. We've had an exciting school year this year with lots of different activities ranging from snow week to making new friends. This school year has been packed. The combining of schools has given us a lot of exciting opportunities. Luna Ball Stevens says her favorite memory from this year is joining a group of journalism students for a tea time where we talked about school events. The students have a lot of fun with popular movies and things that have been happening recently. Miley G. and Lorenzi says that her favorite Snow Week memory is doing the Barbie dance for the Pep Fest. Melania Duffy also commented that her favorite memory from this school year is meeting up with her friends before school. Sounds like the Rockridge students have been enjoying their time this school year. Can't wait to see what next year brings. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. Thank you for joining us this morning for the season finale of your Rockridge Rundown. I hope you all have an amazing summer vacation. I will not be seeing you next year.